my goodness, has our Roz become so desperate for views that he is trying to scare billion tears and million screams from us? Well, actually this episode is going to be enlightening and fun at the same time. And it also helps to dispel some myth that monkey haters love to spread. See those flowers? Not big. Are they? In fact they are tiny, only measuring less than 5 millimeters across each. You are seeing them in greater clarity because I am using a macro lens setup. If I up the magnification still. Wow, those tiny droplets really come to life, don't they? The maximum magnification I could get is between 2 to 2.5 and with this setup I think we could start to investigate. Let's try Nora's troop first. Hey, are there any volunteers? <coughs> no, never mind. Perhaps Bruce is more amenable. Or that female, we will find out. The problem however with macro photography is that the subject has to stay still, which monkeys never do. I am not getting close enough, I really want to get magnification down to individual strand of hair. Come on, Bruce, stay still could you? Damn it, Bruce will never make good model, I give up. Now this female is better. I could get my lens real close. Can you see any creepy crawly at all? Ah, Bruce is back again. They are really quite spotlessly clean, aren't they? Sorry, no kids. Let's try Skull Head's troop. And now the female with ectrodactyly or more commonly known as cleft hand. With such deformity affecting both her hands she won't be able to self-groom well like the others. Amazing, she is just as spotlessly clean like the others. Social grooming is not only for bonding, for comfort, it also serves to keep an individual clear of creepy crawly as living in a troop means everyone has to be clean and healthy, and infestation of one means infestation to everyone in the end. It helps if everyone take cares of one another. And that care also extends to one with disability. I am amazed that this little guy doesn't seem to be too duly alarmed with my massive lens setup. Oops, 
ghost, perhaps he is. Last one, Loina's troop. Oops, never mind. Asking an alpha male to stay still is always going to be difficult. Anyway I am happy with the footage I have managed already. What is the purpose of grooming in macaques? There are at least a dozen papers published on the subject and most of the papers I have read are more concerned with the debate whether it is, in layman's term a subconscious response to the presence of parasites or other measurable external parameters like humidity, temperature etc., or as a self-aware and purposeful response not only to reduce or preempt a parasitic load but also serve for less tangible psychological and social goals. To me, I think unless we could read their mind we will never know the exact reasons behind each time a macaque chooses which one to groom and which area to groom and how they groom it, we can never separate all the factors involved and really is it necessary. In my opinion it is safe to say that if such behavior has evolved to stay it must serve a beneficial purpose and help the survival of the individual and group as a whole. I am very much in favor that grooming has both a beneficial tangible and intangible elements in its purposes. Ectoparasites are common in wild animals and most animals without the use of hands like primates do, could only do so much to get rid of them and for those with a furry coat, these creepy crawlies are a serious health hazard if they are ever allowed to become an infestation. It is not surprising that macaques would spend a significant amount of their time in grooming oneself as well as others. Of the aforementioned ectoparasites, only lice, ticks and mites are a real concern in macaques as three quarters of the life cycle of fleas are on the ground. An egg laid down drops into a lair, it hatches, the larva crawls around feeding on organic debris, it then forms a cocoon and the final form, a blood-sucking adult jumps back to its host. And as macaques sleep mostly sitting upright, balancing on a branch in trees, unlike other mammals that use a regular ground layer with bedding, they seldom do get fleas normally. With their acute eyesight and excellent eye-hand coordination, readily visible ectoparasites like lice and ticks are also not a problem for macaques as they could be easily picked off either by oneself or by others during grooming. That leaves us with only parasitic mites as these tiny eight-legs fellows are not only microscopic they live either inside or near a hair follicle or worse still, burrow themselves into the skin to live. They are really quite inaccessible once they are established. Fortunately the disease they cause, mange, is quite obvious and individuals with the condition are likely to be shunned by their peers just like we humans do with fellows who have obvious scabies etc. So far I have yet to see a case of mange in the troops I follow. In all fairness, macaques are as clean as they can be. In fact they are more aware of keeping ectoparasites off than we humans do. How often do you check each individual strand of your hair for creepy crawlies? And they are certainly cleaner than many wild mammals that sleep in a lair and without the use of a pair of dexterous hands. You could call them anything you want to show your disdain towards these animals but please please refrain from using the word like fleabag etc. Next time you are trying to contribute your knowledge somewhere from a basement under a rock. Be more specific, show that you are intelligent enough to participate in the comment section. Bonk. Thank you.